Sarah, your team held a focus group with two-time uh, Trump voters, that's interesting, the day after he was indicted by a Manhattan grand jury. Now, they were asked for their thoughts on the indictment and whether they were more or less likely to vote for him a third time. Let's take a listen. For those of you that have heard about it, um, tell me what you've heard, what you know. After listening to a lot and reading a lot online, it's for an item that something that he's done that wasn't illegal, that if it was illegal, it was past the, uh, the statute of limitation, and it was something that the federal government didn't even want to deal with, uh, but the state does. And uh, from everything that I've read, it's pretty obvious to me, uh, and I'm pretty firm on this in my opinion, that this is totally politically motivated. As soon as I heard the news, I felt like I'm supporting him even more. <laughs> Just for the fact that I don't like what's happening and uh, for political persecution of someone, it could be any of us. It could be, and if they can do it to Trump where he can defend himself, I can only imagine how it would be if it would just a normal person. That's what I, I, she said it perfectly. That's what I thought too. If they can do it to him, which he has the power, the money, and he can defend himself, what would happen to us? If they're going to go after Trump for something from decades ago, then they may as well all turn themselves in. Jennifer, do you think it's going to make you support Trump more or the same? Oh, no, it's totally more. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. do you think it is? Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's not fair. Um, and he's definitely a target and it's just, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. I mean, it really is ridiculous. Wow. Sarah, this is great work and so revealing and important because it does show, I mean, three times voting for Trump, given everything, it does show in some ways, I want to be really careful here, but has a lot to do with other things that are happening, even the, the Fox law, lawsuit, because Trump has been able to sort of pervade our society with a fire hose of falsehoods. And there are people who will double down and who will triple down and their, and their premises, good people, but their premises are based on Trump's lies. Yeah, so I call this the rally round Trump effect, mm -hmm. uh, where voters feel like, and you can hear it, right? You hear Trump says this, his surrogates say this, this idea that if they can do this to Trump, they can do this to you. Right. And so voters feel, they, they've over the years, they've developed this relationship with Trump where they feel like he is their weapon. He is the hammer to go after their enemies. And that's why he says things like, yeah. you know, I am your retribution, retribution. because yeah. that's the relationship that he has uh, with these voters. And, and um, you know, I think what the indictments do, right, is it allows him to to have sort of a new grievance. He's been locked in the grievance of the 2020 election, uh, but now he's got now he's got a new grievance, and so they're they're rallying to him. But the worst part of that is, like, we expect this from the voters. I've seen hmm. this now with both impeachments. The voters always do this. The the problem now is that his competitors in the Republican primary are also doing this. Ron DeSantis is rushing to his aid. Nikki Haley is coming to his aid, and they're all condemning, uh, you know these indictments, and that creates a new dynamic where these 2024 challengers all become sort of supporting characters in the central drama of Donald Trump, which means we're all talking about him all the time. He sucks up all the oxygen, and this is how he becomes the front runner, and it's why he's so difficult to beat. And so, you know, I was watching that clip with Governor Kemp, he wouldn't even, you know, say Trump's name. He wouldn't say, he wouldn't sort of come out and condemn Trump. And until these, the Republican Party, they have agency here, until they start to condemn Donald Trump, um, you know, there's going to be no movement. They're basically all just ceding this election to him, which I think is a huge catastrophic mistake. Wow. So, Matt, Sarah makes such a good point there, that it's not just that the indictments and the way Trump has, has frankly, used them to his political advantage, has rallied his base, 
but he's sort of, he's been able to neuter some of the attacks against him. He's been able to silence some of those would-be rivals of his who need to come up with some way to, dis to, to distinguish themselves from him if they're going to beat him to be the nominee. So you tell us, if you have it, what can they do? Is there a candidate in the Republican field who has the ability to go after Trump? And, and if so, how do you defeat him from within? So I don't think that there is, to be honest with you. I mean, that's why they play the game, right? Who knows how the campaign will shake out. But look, I think a lot of us were kind of hoping that it would be Ron DeSantis. And the reason we were hoping that is we saw what he did in Florida. Uh, he seemed to have a commanding presence. Um, and he has, a, frankly, a very compelling argument. He's got a generational change argument. He's got the, the argument that he is Trump, but more competent, that he can uh, sort of execute the culture war in a more competent manner, uh, less drama, less tweets. So, you know, DeSantis, there was sort of a hope that he would rise to the occasion. But I think what has happened in the past few weeks really is two things. One, we have seen that Ron DeSantis uh, is not great so far. He is not this great magical hope that we thought he might be. Um, it's not Florida. You know, in Florida, he kind of controls everything. He controls the stage. He, he can look tough. He can look commanding. Uh, he doesn't quite have that same charisma. And then the other thing, of course, is the indictment, the indictment of Donald Trump, which I think really propelled him, uh, as Sarah was saying, uh, to have a new grievance and a new argument. And I think there is a rally around the Trump effect. And guess what? If it subsides, there's going to be two or three other indictments that will likely boost Trump. Uh, at least in the short term. And so, uh, may, look, within the, is it within the realm of possibility that, that Tim Scott, that the public all of a sudden wants an optimistic, uh, happy warrior? It's, it's, it's possible. But I think, uh, obviously, the smart money is and has long been on Donald Trump. Sarah, you do a lot of these groups, and over the course of many years, could you talk a little bit about the shift in what you heard from the strong Trump supporters before the indictment and then after in the context of how they saw other candidates? Yeah, so for a long time now, really since, um, let's say, the January 6th hearings, but then really after the 2022 elections, there was this real acceleration and an interest for moving on from Trump. I've been on this program before talking about the fact that there was an appetite from, you know, a chunk of the party's voters that they thought Trump had too much baggage to be electable. And they really saw Ron DeSantis as that candidate who could be, as they would term it, Trump without the baggage. Um, but I think that two things have happened recently. As Matt says, we're watching Ron DeSantis not be a particularly compelling um, candidate. And also the other thing that I'm seeing in the groups is that as Trump begins to attack Ron DeSantis, some of those uh, attacks are kind of seeping into the language and the way that these uh, voters are talking about DeSantis. You know, they say that DeSantis feels a little establishment, a little swampy. They're not sure they can trust him. And this is just an overall shift in the Republican Party where there's a lot of these candidates who forged their identities before Donald Trump was on the scene. Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, Tim Scott. Voters don't want those candidates. Like, that's just what I hear from them. They want people who have a sort of post-Trump vision. And so Ron DeSantis was one of the few candidates that seemed like an like a post-Trump kind of candidate whose identity was forged uh, during Donald Trump's candidacy. But they wanted to see him be like Trump, fight like Trump. And if Trump is kind of alphaing him the way that he's been the last few weeks, you know, why take Trump without the baggage or or some other sort of version of Trump when you can get just the straight right. up OG for, you know, version of Trump? You see those donors backing away. Sarah Longwell and Matt Lewis. Thank you both very much. <laughs>